Hey, what is up everybody? This is Steve Breach coming to you here today. We're talking about WCW NWO sold out 1997. Um, years back, um, the week before the uh, WWE Network launched, I made a video of the top five, I don't know why I did ten, top five WCW matches to watch on the WWE Network once the network launched. On that list, I added NWO sold out 1997. Um, basically talking about the high point of the NWO. Um, you know, with, with Hogan, Hall, Nash, Six, um, all being out there, them hosting their own um, w, or w, well, it's the NWO sold out. It's the NWO branded pay-per-view um, where basically NWO bought time on WCW um, and they got to the point where they had enough I don't know if it's because they won war games, and that's where, you know, because as, as that match ended, they basically talked about how now they had these set, uh, I, I guess you can say, um, just, they almost didn't have the run of WCW, obviously they were still in charge, but they basically made mention that there were some pre-match stipulations that were going to be have to given to the NWO, and I guess that was sort of like, the, it just writing a blank check that they could cash at any time. Um, honestly, looking back at, on this now, I know this is at a point of WCW that a lot of people like to dive back on. I can tell you that honestly, once the Tony Schiavone podcast launched, um, it was one of the first shows that was voted on by fans that he, they wanted to hear Tony talk about NWO sold out in 1997. Um, Neil Pruitt, um, one of the uh, senior uh, directors of WCW just launched his own podcast, Secrets of WCW. Um, I can honestly tell you that it's an easy listen. I listened to two episodes today. I listened to Mr. Piper Goes to Alcatraz as well as the NWO sold out in 1997. Um, I will tell you that it's not Tony Schiavone, but it's still honestly a, a really good, easy listening podcast. Um, they're hyping out a book um, that's going to be coming out, uh, you know, I believe early next year. Um, talking about uh, what Time Warner thought of, of WCW and the reasons why it closed. I know there's been a lot of books written about WCW and WCW closing, like the Brian Alvarez and Artie Reynolds' death of WCW. Um, they've made the, the uh, WWE um, uh, life and death of uh, WCW or, or whatever it's, it's called, something like that. Uh, oh, the rise and fall, that's what it is. But this one honestly isn't taking from a wrestling fan's perspective. It's honestly looked at more of on the business side of uh, uh, America Online uh, and Time Warner and, and why this deal went down. And I think that honestly it's a pretty good podcast. The first two episodes, uh, the first one was talking about uh, Roddy Piper um, and the hype up of the, how they had to shoot um, the Piper goes to Alcatraz for the Super Bowl match against Hollywood Hulk Hogan, um, which I believe was about this time. I believe Super Bowl is I believe the next pay-per-view after NWO sold out in 1997. But honestly, there's a lot of people who look back at this as being a great show. Um, I can honestly tell you that uh, this was not a good show. Um, I have lots of questions about this uh, pay-per-view. Um, honestly, these days, um, UFC has a lot of um, success um, running uh, UFC pay-per-views. Uh, they go down the uh, night before the Super Bowl, um, but this WB or sorry WCW pay per view was the night before the Super Bowl as well. Um, this uh, did not have a huge buy rate. Um, I believe that one of the things that really the people looked at um, was the fact that you know on Nitro. Uh, basically, any time the NWO was involved with anything, whether if it was a main event match, whether if it was undercard match, you constantly had, um, you know, the NWO getting involved in the matches, either ca causing NWO easy wins or the NWO causing sort of a disqualification, or maybe even the NWO getting the match just scrubbed and and, and thrown out. So. I think that honestly, with this being an NWO branded show, hosted under NWO rules, um, and not really having any matches named, um, we knew that the Giant was going to take on Hulk Hogan. We knew that Six was going to take on uh, Eddie Guerrero uh, for the United States Heavyweight Championship match. But I don't think any of the other matches on the show um, basically 
um, were talked about um, at all. I don't think anything was hyped. I don't think any you knew anything that was going to go down. Um, the whole show was built around the concept of uh, basically Eric Bischoff saying either join the NWO or pay the consequences. So even though we had had Buff Bagwell turn on Scotty Riggs um, uh, from the American Males to join the NWO, we, we didn't really know the whole roster. Maybe it, it was like we were waiting to see that people possibly were going to jump during the show um, and, and, and lead to things like that. But honestly, as a wrestling fan at this time, not knowing what was going to happen on the show, unless you were the hugest NWO mark of all time, this show had huge, huge question marks on it as of, um, you know, why um, you would want to buy this. Um, from a business standpoint, um, there's a few things that don't really make sense about this show. Uh, coming to you live from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, if you watch the open of the show, which happens basically in the snow, the NWO, they show up on uh, the back of garbage trucks. Um, basically having their own parade. Um, why the snow? Why Cedar Rapids, Iowa? If this is an NWO pay-per-view, why is it not going down in the hometown of Hollywood Hulk Hogan, that being Tampa, Florida? Um, why is it in a very cool location? I know you want to sell tickets. I know you want to uh, get that gate. But why not have it, if you want to have it in an NWO location, why not have it in Tampa where it's warm? Where it's hot, where you can have you know hot babes be there, um, something like that, uh, or why not run it like in some smoky, rundown bar um, that basically looks like this is where the NWO hangs out when they're not doing Monday Nitro um, week in and week out. Um, th th those are just things that I thought about on the show. When you look at the card, I think that honestly the one match that stands out is the Steiner Brothers beating the Outsiders uh, for the World Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. In this match, um, there's basically one referee, Nick Patrick, the NWO referee, um, which referees the whole entire show. Um, basically, there's a ref bunt. Nick, Nick Patrick goes down when the Steiners uh, gain the advantage in this match. Uh, uh, the referee, Randy Anderson, not under NWO, um, comes running down and ends up counting the pinfall. The Steiners are awarded the tag titles, um, and um, it, it's sort of like a big comfort behind. It's not the only victory um, that WCW had on the show. They had many, honestly, um, but this is possibly the biggest one that they had. Uh, on this show, we see Big Bubba Rogers um, beat Hugh Morris, which is the big boss man. Uh, bo uh, boss man, th this is a horrible match involving a, a motorcycle. Um, and and um, basically, um, the match ends in a, in a count out. Very much a dud. Um, Jeff Jarrett uh, beats Mr. Wall Street after Steve McMichael um, hits uh, Mr. Wall Street with the, uh, the briefcase. Um, not, nothing big there. Um, and, and what should have been a really, really good match, Buff beats Scotty Riggs. That just sort of fell flat with the tag guys you know, breaking up and going their separate directions. Um, we had Scott Norton defeating DDP after DDP beat the NWO's ass. Um, and then basically, uh, NWO was tired of getting beat up by this guy, so they offered him a spot in the NWO, um, which DDP sort of, uh, in, in in his fashion, took the shirt, delivered the diamond cutter to, to Scott Norton, and then took off through the crowd. Um, when he took off through the crowd, he ended up getting counted out uh, and losing the match. But you know he got the shine uh, from going along with it. Um, possibly one of the worst ladder matches I'll say in my mind that I, I've ever seen. Um, Eddie Guerrero in six. Um, I know that that um, Eddie Guerrero had a really good ladder match. Um, with Rob Van Dam. Um, I can't think of Six having another ladder match that would stand out, but in, on paper, this should be a really, really good match. Um, I don't know if it's because of the fact that the, the fans in Cedar Rapids just didn't go crazy for it or anything like that, but to me, it's just sort of a dud. It's featured on one of the ladder match uh, DVDs, uh, sets, and uh, it's honestly one of the biggest duds that's on there, honestly, in my mind. Um, both guys end up fighting up the ladder. Um, Eddie ends up hitting six with the belt, and then he ends up retaining uh, the United States heavyweights. It, it, just, it just, 
in my mind, not good. And then in my mind, the one reason why I'm sure anybody who bought this pay-per-view was upset with NWO sold out 1997. In the main event, in Monday Nitro fashion, we have Hollywood Hulk Hogan going up against the Giant. The Giant had won World War III, um, which um, granted him a title shot. Um, he asked for his title shot the night after Starcade against Hulk Hogan, uh, even though they were both members of the NWO. The Giant wanted to be the leader. The Giant wanted to be the guy who was the champion. He wanted to be the guy making all the money. Uh, the NWO beat him down. A Giant asked for the title shot. It was granted. Um, on the, the preview, um, they had a non-title match on Nitro, which was involving the NWO coming down. Um, and beating up the Giant. Um, no, no contest there. And you come down to the pay-per-view, and what do they give us again? No contest. Uh, basically, the Giant uh, ends up getting beat down um, uh, by the NWO, but he's still delivering choke slams, taking everybody out. At this point, Eric Bischoff gives Hollywood Hulk Hogan what I guess is the Honky Tonk Man's guitar, and Hogan hits the Giant over the back of the head. Uh, match ends up being a no contest, just thrown out. No main event. And basically, they're telling you, tune in on Nitro and see where we go from here. What did I just pay for? At this time, possibly a pay-per-view was 25 maybe even 30 bucks. Um, WCW fan unhappy. That's all I got to say when I look back at it. It's NWO sold out in 1997. Uh, sold out ran as the pay-per-view, I believe, until 2000. Um, from then on, it would just be WCW slash NWO, a co-branded um, pay-per-view. Um, I don't think it ever really lived up to the hype. Um, I know it, one of the sold out, I believe, is when Scott Steiner ends up turning on Rick Steiner. Um, but the rest of the shows are main evented by Lex Luger and Randy Savage in 98. Goldberg vs. Scott Hall in a stun gun match in 99. Chris Benoit vs. Sid Vicious um, in 2000, which I believe is the show where Sid, or I'm sorry, where Chris Benoit wins the championship and then it ends up. Um, signing with WWE the next day, quitting WWE. And I, I'm not sure if he's on uh, Nitro. I'm sorry, if he, I'm not sure if he's. I know he's not on Nitro because Nitro is where he's quit. But I'm not sure if he appears on SmackDown or Raw or if he wait a week. But that's when basically um, you had all um, four members, uh, three guys um, from the. Uh, oh shoot, what was their names? The they. Um, Revolution? Revolution was, I think, their name. But you had Eddie Guerrero um, from the Filthy Animals. Uh, you had um, Perry Saturn. You had Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero all jump ship. Four of the, the mid-card guys that really were delivering matches that were great for WCW jumping over and joining WWE.